Hi, I'm Bill with 1L Rogers from 1L Media. I was asked to produce a video by Community Crossroads that focuses on success stories in regards to employing individuals with disabilities. In producing this video, I was able to meet and interview people who have been gainfully employed in their communities. I was also able to meet business owners, managers, and fellow workers who were important to the success and achievement of these individuals' employment goals. It is my hope that through these stories, you will realize that employing people with disabilities is an untapped resource. My name is Gary Malone. I am a hard worker. I have two jobs. I have a good life, a good personality, you know, I have fun, stay out of trouble, and do what I can do, work my butt off. I bought a footwear associate. I do talk in the show, and sometimes I'm in the back room, and I do it in the bay room. I organize all the clothes. I do the register, temporary, but I'm learning to do the new register, the touch screen. And I like my job a lot, but it's hard, but I got, got used to it. And Mark Bassett, I got hired April 14, 11. I'm in the front end, do some cleaning, bagging, clean the bathroom, pushing carriages, make a lot of friends because they know I'm a hard worker. They know I'm a good kid. I stay out of trouble, they look out for me. And I'm a good customer service. I have a lot of compliments they give me and my manager was very happy. How you doing? Kevin Levesque, one of the uh, assistant store managers at uh, Salem, New Hampshire, store number six. And uh, Gary does an excellent job for us. We're very happy with him. Stock and shelf, that's my favorite a lot. It feel comfortable. I'm becoming pretty fast and I'm fast page. And I remember all the food and grocery and I, I remember everything. Because the good company you work for, it's a career. It's like a good check, get paid every week, bonuses every four months. You know, it's a good place to work for. I like Ben, but sometimes I want to save my money. Like I need to save and I need to prove my skills and I want to get on my goal. Like, like I want to get a car, get an apartment, get an implant, and I want to get it done and move out of the way and keep going and work hard. Then we like Gary Malone to like G-Money with the belt I'm wearing. I'm sure that many of you will have questions throughout this video. To help with some of these concerns about getting started, I sat down with Dee Johnson from Community Crossroads. My name is Deanna Johnson. Everybody calls me Dee. I'm the Client Benefits Coordinator here at Community Crossroads. Um, I work with families around their, um, their benefits and hopefully helping them find employment and um, helping them manage their, their benefits while employed. There's different things that an individual can do, you know, when they're looking for, you know, employment. Obviously, if they're in school, you know, the schools are great to kind of help start that, that set up. Um, if they're not in school, if they're part of the area agency, you know, there are different um, funding sources and such that they can get help with around employment. Um, there's also Voc Rehab, which is a great resource for anybody that's looking for employment. You know, um, they can help match you with a vendor. Um, depending on what type of employment you're looking for. And once you're hooked up with that vendor, they will actually spend the time to help you with your resume, to find out where your talents are, and to actually go out in the community and help you find that employment. I traveled to Auto Auction of New England to film Brian Gordon at his job. At the auction, working in the uh, food department there, there's people walking to get food. So I watch the tables, walk, sweep the floors, you, you name it. I'm a huge car enthusiast, so I love that job because I watched it and I got to see the auction go through with cars. You work, you make money, you feel happy, you don't feel like you're always asking for, for money. The one thing about working is you make money, and I love making money because I have a lot of things to save up for, so. A truck, a brand new truck, my own apartment, a lot of cool things like that. One of the most common questions people have asked is if I start working, will I lose my benefits? Here's Dee to explain. Initially, folks and families, they, they feel like they're their child or they're, that they're going to lose their benefits. You go to work, you know, if they're collecting Social Security or SSI, you know, they've always been told, oh, if you work too much, you're going to lose your benefits. That's the biggest barrier right there. There are so many work incentives out there. Um, depending on what you're collecting, if you're, you know, getting Social Security disability insurance or 
SSI, Medicaid. There are so many things that have been put into place to help individuals get out there and start employment. They're not going to lose all their benefits right up front. There are so many different things that they can do to, to get that assistance to get them working. Um, my biggest suggestion is I try to tell people, you know, contact your area agencies, find out who your benefit person is at those agencies, get a meeting and sit down with them and let them explain and help you because there are so many different things out there to help folks. You just have to ask because it's there. I was invited to Life is Good in Hudson, New Hampshire to meet Maddie Pinsons. She just loves being around everybody, loves seeing everybody, you know, high fives people and just really, I don't know, she really enjoys it. She thrives being here. It was really through my, my, you know, my relationship with Region 10 and through fundraising and being exposed to the needs. When Maddie's mom, Lois, approached us, it was, uh, it was an absolute no-brainer. We wanted to do the right thing and evaluate, it. is it productive for the business and can we satisfy what Maddie needs? A typical day for Maddie will be coming in and stickering uh, bags, uh, putting UPC stickers on products. Uh, right now we have her scanning orders so that we can do some research on those orders later and make sure they've gone through the correct uh, warehouse process. Uh, and we also have her shredding uh, sensitive documents. I've been working with Maddie about a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, we've been working at Life is Good in that year and a half that I've worked with her. Some days are mm -hmm. easy, some days are not so easy, but we just try to take something positive out of every day. She's a funny girl. Yeah. We like working with her. Sometimes when I, we feel down and she comes in and she makes us laugh and she tries playing all the time. She likes to play. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another thing that I've learned through working with Maddie, and Maddie really wants to work hard every day. She wants to earn a paycheck so they can, she, she can spend her money. Uh, but she really wants to do and perform work that adds value. I think Maddie's attitude fits in well with Life is Good in that she has great, fun energy. It, it, it doesn't mean it was, a, it was a, a natural fit day one because there was still some uh, lack of understanding with a lot of the employees that you know haven't been around Maddie or someone uh, that would have challenges like Maddie. Uh, but once through some conversation, through some learning, through just you know understanding who Maddie is and that this is Maddie, and it's it's okay. Along with her job at Life Is Good, Maddie also has started her own personal errand service business called Maddie Infinity. Sometimes when you're looking for a job. There might be someone in your community that's also looking to hire. It's a good idea to keep your eyes and ears open to opportunities. People are afraid to, to talk to an owner thinking that, oh God, you know, what are they going to say? And I tell families, you know, everybody knows somebody. And if you see a situation and you're a little nervous, maybe you don't feel comfortable asking about the job, call your area agency, call your service coordinator, call me, you know. We'll make the phone call, we'll, we'll pop in and, and check it out. Because a lot of times, the employer needs help, but unless it's brought to their attention, they might not even think of, oh geez, you know what, this might be a perfect job, let's, let's try to help somebody. You know, a lot of times if they don't know about it, they're not gonna ask about it. So it's really kind of getting the information out there to employers to, to have them open their mind a little bit. When you're out in the communities and, and working with the businesses, there's a barrier of the unknown. They don't realize that um, it's okay to hire individuals with disabilities. They're really no different than you and I. They, they just learn a little differently. You know, they excel in a different way. It's just, you know, teaching the employers to say, it's okay if you don't understand, let me help you get there. Here at Dodge Grain in Salem, Paul Garbedian's job is stocking and organizing shelves along with removing trash. He works regularly with a job coach. How much, are, what are you counting this for? What do you got to put there? Uh, you have to go out back. Go back. And get what? Uh, two. Two preserved though. Stop. Yeah. How many of these should we get? Uh, two. Uh, dodge wild. Three. Can you turn these around, Paul, so I don't know. Yep. Always something. Paul's 
one of my longest standing guys. He's been with me for, I guess, 15 years or so. I've known Paul since he was in grade school. Really? Yeah. And I recruited him. Right. And we like the help. Getting him burnt down. You should be doing this at least you can film you. Finding what somebody is good at may take a while. You might want to try volunteering at different things to see what your strengths are. You know, volunteering, some people think it's great, some people think it's a waste of time. To be honest with you, I think it's a great opportunity for individuals to get out there and learn what some of their skills are. You know, certain jobs they might not volunteer at very long. Other individuals, they might be at the same place for, for a couple of years. You need to be looking at that volunteer job that they've been at for a couple of years because there's obviously something there that that individual is really good at and that they enjoy. And if people maybe take the time a little bit to really focus on that job, they actually might find out that there's a specific skill that that individual is really good at. And that's a marketing skill out there that usually a company is looking for. So volunteering to me is a great start to really get an idea of what an individual really enjoys doing. Kevin Culligan has been working at McDonald's for over 20 years. He has built a career for himself and continues to enjoy his job. I take out the trash, and I clean the trays, and uh, I wash the floor, I rip them up. I, 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 I love to see uh, the people coming in. So I think it's a very really nice idea uh, to, uh, to have a, a bunch of money in my pocket. Yes, uh, I love it, I love to make money. I took over the whole lobby at McDonald's. And I, I, I don't regret I have high marks. So you, you, you must be like one of their favorite employees. Mm, I am. <laughs> Dee mentions earlier in the video about the many work incentives. A great example of this is the Mead program. The MEAD program is a program through Medicaid that allows you to save money and to earn a paycheck without losing your health insurance. It's a simple phone call um, to the Medicaid office. Even your area agency benefits person can help. Um, just a, a pay stub to send over to the Medicaid office to let them know that you're working and you ask to be put in the MEAD program. You still have your Medicaid and you're working and you don't have to worry about losing it. It's a great program that's out there to an extra incentive. Longevity in the workplace is something that all employers and employees strive for. Just like Kevin Culligan, Danny Buck built a career. Cynthia Mahar, Executive Director at Community Crossroads, has been friends with Danny Buck for over 20 years. Cynthia assisted with his interview. Cindy Mahar taught me to take the bus from the Andover to Lawrence and back. All by yourself? All by myself. How old were you? Oh, how old was I? I was in um, my 20s. We were both very yeah. young then. I think yeah. we were still in, you, we were both just out of high school. Yeah. Been at the Santa Post office for 26 years. My official job title is custodian cleaner. Doing sweeping, some trash, taking care of empties out on the loading dock. Dusting, vacuuming once in a while. The last uh, thing I do almost every, every day is checking the vehicles. Make sure windows are up, the emergency brakes on. And sometimes they forget to put the emergency brakes on in the vans. And once in a while, LOVs maybe knock off. And you can't have those rolling. And those with foot brakes on, you never can tell. Uh, it makes me feel good that uh, um, they're in place to keep the building tidy and helping them out as much as we can. And um, for overtime, I've been helping over in London area as well. Yes, I think I'll retire in the next 10 years. And I'm going to sell. We had a room added on downstairs. We're going to prime it, paint it, and then clean house up, 
all that, and then we're going to sell that, and then I'm looking for a lakefront property with a house. Yeah. What a great, you know, future plan. Yeah. <laughs> Being employed is something that all people should be allowed to pursue. The good aspects of having a job far outweigh any negatives. You're always going to make more money working than you are if you're just at home collecting benefits. So besides, you know, making friends and, and contributing to your community like everybody else, you're making more money so you can go out with your friends and go to the movies and go to dinner and not have to worry so much about, you know, how much money you have or how you have to save it because you will make more working. I actually think employment is important to everybody, not just folks with disabilities. Um, but they should be able to feel like everybody else. You know, we, we go to school, our friends go, get jobs. We, we graduate high school, we go to school, we, we go to work. It's important that they feel like everybody else because they're no different. From what started as enjoying gardening at home and then volunteering at a local greenhouse, Jill Libby created her own business called The Wild Bean. Jill developed the idea of an order and delivery service for herbs with the support of the greenhouse. I plant herbs, I help them grow, I advertise, take orders, fill the orders, and then set up deliveries. I also make window boxes of herbs I get to be my own boss and make my own hours. I love it. So Jill, let me ask you something. Are you afraid of bees? I love being busy. I love making money. I love the greenhouse work and to know I'm making a difference in my customers' lives. It's very rewarding when I deliver healthy herbs and see my customers smile. Throughout this video, we've seen many people work at different jobs and different careers. But with our last story, sometimes your passion becomes your profession. When me and Eamon were at um, Berkshire House, we, we wanted to start a band together, and that's how we formed the band, Bay Road. Our parents set up a program uh, two years ago, uh, and they wanted, they, they knew that both Aaron and I wanted to uh, continue performing. We knew for Aaron that was absolutely what, what we wanted to see him do. We've always been supportive of, uh, of him uh, in every facet of his life, uh, particularly his uh, musical ability, his, his strength, and uh, we wanted to see that uh, continue with him for long term. If somebody is doing something that they love and they're good at it and they are very, and he's very professional about it, um, then how could I not be supportive of that? I was teaching Aaron drum lessons a couple times a week at, a, at another program that he was attending. And after a couple of years of working with him, I think his parents noticed the musical growth happening for him. And uh, lucky for me, they, they gave me a lot of that credit and said, hey, you're doing a great job. And they decided uh, they wanted to look into the potential of starting a, another music program based around Aaron and Eamon for Bay Road, I'm the manager, the booking agent, the music director. I help co-produce their music, and I'm also playing bass these days. When we go, go to, after not maybe seeing them or hearing them for a month or two, and we go to a, an event and you hear the progress, it's so like obvious. And uh, 
I attribute that not only to Aaron and Eamon working hard at it, but you know, kudos to Denzel for it. You know, and he's, he's done more in their progress musically in the last two years than the previous 10 when they were involved with another group. Well, we basically, we, the program is four days a week um, for six hours each day. So what we generally do is when I come in around 10 a.m., you know, they're still finishing up their breakfast. We kind of hang out, talk about the agenda for the day, go upstairs and start working on what we need to do for about two to three hours, take a lunch break. Sometimes when it's nice, we'll go out, throw the Frisbee, just socialize, hang out, and then we'll go back to work for the last, you know, two and a half hours of the day. I mean, we're in intense focus rehearsals where it's, okay, play it again, okay, this is how this goes, we're, or we're listening to, you know, MP3 tracks of songs that we're learning. So as we're listening to the song, you know, the, Eamon and I are figuring out the chord progression to it. I give Aaron the drum line and we just, so it's a, it's a lot of focused work. Six hours a day, four days a week is the band uh, rehearsals. Uh, my own time is around nine hours a day top on top of uh, Bay Road stuff and also during the weekend. Uh, do you do anything else? <laughs> um, no, pretty much just all music all the time. Um, I, I feel fortunate that he does love music so much because otherwise I don't know, I guess we would find something for him to do with his life, but it was a little bit easier for us because it was such a clear path. Every every person in the band plays six hours. How much? How do you do? You practice at home? Yeah, I use a drum pad. Yeah, because it's too loud. <laughs> um, each and every year, you know, you see him grow musically. He gets stronger and stronger. He gets. Uh, he's now very confident. Um, he's also a, a firefighter, volunteer firefighter. It used to be in conversation when he'd be introducing himself to people, he would he would say, "I'm a firefighter." Now he says, I'm a drummer. You know, it's our second year as a band. Um, the fact that we can even, you know, get frequent gigs or get on some of the events that we're on is, you know, I have friends that have been uh, a little bothered by the fact that a group of my students, I can get on some of these festivals where there's bands knocking on the door and they can't get in. So with music, it's, it's really a lot about relationships that you build. There was some reservations early on that He'd be playing nightclubs and bars, and but that's the life of a musician. And uh, Demze is very selective on the environments and the places that they that they play in. So um, they could get a lot other opportunities, but not necessarily the right opportunities. You know, the money's been decent for a lot of the private events. We did we did something a really incredible event for Community Crossroads, and you know, we've done a couple other private parties. How does playing in a working band make you feel? Really good. What's, what's the best part about it? Getting, seeing what Dempsey says about how much we got, putting the, in the glass of money and stuff and keeping it for wherever we want. Well, I think it's kind of a culmination of what he loves, so it, it's fulfilling for him, so it makes me feel good because he feel, feels very fulfilled about, about it. It's like a dream to him. I know not many people have the chance to make a living off of what they really love to do and have a high passion for it. So I really feel lucky to be able to make a living with uh, what I love to do. So the future plans really are to release a new CD, come back in the fall and just gig steadily. Employing individuals with disabilities is certainly an untapped resource here in the state of New Hampshire. We saw people working at stores, restaurants, warehouses, and having their own businesses. It is my hope that you have enjoyed this video and that it got you thinking about what is possible. For more information, please contact Community Crossroads or your local area agency. Thank you.